Welcome back to Could I Code? My name's Chris, and today we're continuing our journey towards building a 2D side-scrolling RPG in Unity with almost no game dev experience. I say almost no game dev experience, but we actually started this project at the beginning of the year, and somehow we're already nearing the end of it, so I guess it's now more like some game dev experience, kind of? Anyways, we're shaking things up in today's episode and taking a break from some of the heavy system work we completed in the last two episodes, where we took our character from not being able to interact with our enemies at all, to now being able to swing a sword and do damage to the enemies. So many new systems. Today, we are instead going to expand our game world with the addition of our second map. And yes, there is still going to be some system work in this episode, as not only will we be adding a new map, but also a scene manager that will allow us to travel between the two maps using our portals. By the end of today's episode, we will be able to leave our first map with the portal on the left, load into the new map, and appear right at the connecting portal in the new map which is pretty cool. It's another element that is starting to feel real, which is kind of the magic of game dev. I drew these portals, animated these portals, and now they actually are working like portals for my player. It's very exciting to see, but enough rambling. Let's get into how all of these new additions were actually added to the game. So I guess the first thing we should discuss is which map we will be adding. It's been a while since we've taken a look at our map of the nursery zone, which is kind of what kicked off this whole project in the beginning. Looking at the zone map, we can see where our first map, the beautifully named The Field East of the Cavern, is located. I wanted to add one of the neighboring maps to this map so that we could connect the two via our portals. And ideally, I wanted to start working our way towards the map where the game will start, so we move to the left, which brings us to the Cavern Entrance map. This is an exciting map as it is the connection point between the nursery zone and the mana cavern zone, which is essentially the game's tutorial. Similarly to how we planned out our first map, I mentally drew a pie shape from where our game's camera would be located to envision what elements should be included in this map. Now, of course, the actual map doesn't need to line up one for one with the zone map, but it's a great starting point for inspiration. Taking a look at our pie, there are a few key elements that we should try and include. Firstly, the zone will have more mountains and fewer trees, with three mountains falling within the background. In particular, the mountain on the left will need to be featured prominently as it is the entrance to the Mana Caverns zone, and is where the portal on the left will be stationed. Secondly, an offshoot of the river flows into the Mana Caverns, meaning that we should see this river come out of the foreground and flow to the left of the map. Lastly, there are some huts that should be included on the right of the map. Unlike our previous map, where the hut was just featured in the background, one of the huts should be featured prominently as it belongs to our first NPC who will reside in this map. We won't be adding this NPC in this episode, but I want to make sure that he has a homey location prepared for when he does get added. The last thing to prepare before jumping into Procreate and letting the creative juices start flowing was updating my inspiration canvas in Obsidian. I created this canvas for the first map, and with this map being in the same zone, a lot of the inspiration could remain the same. I did however make some adjustments by adding the neighboring map section, as I believe it would be very important to have a constant reference to what the map on either side of the new map showed in its background. I also updated the map details to now pertain to the cavern entrance map. This map contains no enemies, to the left there is a portal leading into the Mana Caverns, to the right there is a portal leading into the lightly forested area towards Sam the Novice. The main NPC on this map is the Mana Guardian. He will provide some world building, supplies, and the player's first quest to go and catch up with Sam the Novice. And with all of those design and inspiration elements in place, it was finally time to start creating the map. As with all of the art assets for this game, I'm creating this map in Procreate. And hands down the hardest part of any asset, especially an entire map worth of assets, is the dreaded blank canvas. I typically start all of my assets off with a pencil sketch, either in Procreate as in this case, or in a notebook with a pencil. My best advice for this initial part of the creation process is to just experiment and get as many ideas on the paper as possible. At this point, the quality of the drawing really doesn't matter, we're just looking for an overall layout that makes sense. 
The hardest part of this step for this map was figuring out how to handle the river. I knew where I wanted it to end, but finding a way for it to enter the map without feeling super out of place was tricky, and took a lot of experimentation. Once the sketch was in a place where I was happy enough to move on, it was time to start fleshing out the assets on separate layers. One distinct advantage I had with this map was that many of the assets from my first map would translate to this map. This included elements of the ground, the portal, the sky, the mountains, the bushes, and even the hut. Some elements, like the ground, could be directly copied into this map, as it was the same size as the previous map, whereas other elements simply allowed me to have design and colors already figured out. Either way, you'll notice a lot of these elements that existed in the previous map came together quite quickly for this map. The cave entrance, on the other hand, took quite a while. I knew that I wanted the stairs leading into the cave to have a lot of detail. This was to help offset the fact that a large portion of this side of the map would be covered by a very plain mountain face. The details on the steps would make it a focal point, especially as it would lead to the portal entrance. I added different shaped stones on the outside of the steps with two subtly different colors that I felt really gave the steps depth. Finally, I finished them with a nice flat stone on top that would make things a bit easier when aligning them with a collider that our player could walk on. I decided to do away with the railing as it made the location feel too traveled and less like a mysterious and slightly dangerous cave that it was meant to be. I then fleshed out the coloring of the river, even though I knew I would be doing a lot more work to it once I got to animating it. Having it implemented like this allowed me to better render the cave entrance and ensure that the river was flowing through it properly. In a similar vein, I created a placeholder campfire for my NPC's hut. Like the river, it would eventually be animated, but having it created allowed me to better gauge its size and positioning within the rest of the map. And just like that, we had the base assets ready for our map. I then exported a PSD file of the map from Procreate and used Krita to split the assets into different PNG layers, applying a Gaussian blur to the layers furthest in the background. With our map assets ready, we opened Unity and created a new scene for our second map. I watched a quick tutorial from Rehope Games that provided me with the basics of creating new scenes and adding them to our build settings. We also changed the name of our initial scene from Sample Scene to the name of our first map. I started building out the new scene by copying over most of the elements from my first map, including the map assets themselves. I wanted to have them in the new scene to easily reference the sorting layer and settings I used in the background controller parallaxing script. Then it was simply a case of importing the new map assets and adjusting their components to match the settings of their counterparts from the first map, which made it a pretty quick process overall. With minimal adjustments, we had our map in a place where we could play the game and walk around in the new map. Was there still some issues, including the placement of the foreground layer, the staircase not having a collider yet, and the mountain entrance outline being stuck on the wrong layer? Yes, but at least the game didn't crash and our player could still move around. So I went about tweaking the foreground layer, adjusting the layer that the mountain entrance outline was attached to, and adding an edge collider 2D to our staircase. Am I sure that the edge collider component is the best approach to this? No. Did the players slowly get dragged by gravity if the collider was uneven by even a couple of degrees? Yes. But eventually we got the stairs to that magic point where they were working well enough, and we moved on. Next it was time to animate the fire for our NPC's campfire. I watched the Procreate fire animation tutorial from Konchetsky, which produced a simple flame animation that I liked the look of. I used the same steps highlighted in the tutorial to help guide the motion of my flames. However, unlike the tutorial that had two layers of flames of different colors, I used three layers of different colors in my animation. Using the steps from the tutorial to guide the shape of all three layers made the entire process very smooth, and I was happy with the simple fire animation it resulted in. Once the animation was completed in Procreate, I exported the file as a PSD and used Krita to separate the different frames of the animation into individual PNG files. These were then imported into Unity and turned into an animation. I then played around with the animation to try and make it feel a bit more like an organic flame. I settled on removing the two frames that had the flame bend the furthest to the side, and left the remaining frames at a slower frame rate, which I believe made the fire feel more natural. Ultimately, I was very happy with the movement that the animated fire brought to the background, giving the map more life and the hut more of a homey feel. It was then time to animate the map's river asset. 
I was not looking forward to this with how much of a challenge I found making the initial pencil sketch of the river to be, and I was right to be concerned. Much like the fire animation, I started by watching a tutorial from Pixie Gags about water wave animation. I'm not sure how much, if any, of this tutorial I actually worked into my final animation, but at least it gave me something to reference. I again created this animation in Procreate and started by creating frames of the river rising and lowering at different points throughout its flow. I also moved the start of the river to be strategically behind a foreground bush because I found, no matter how hard I tried, that the start of the river looked really weird when animated. I then started adding ripple animations to the frames to help give the river more of a sense of direction. These did the job, however, when imported into Unity, no matter how much I fiddled with the speed of the animation, I could not get the river to not look like it was rushing by at an alarming speed. My goal for the river was to have it gently flow into the cavern entrance, and that was certainly not what was coming through. So I went back to the drawing board. I created some new river frames that had less intense peaks and valleys, and left off any ripple animations. When brought into Unity, this created a much calmer river that I was hoping for. It was less obvious what direction the river was flowing in, however, from the zone map and other maps that I will be building in the future, I believe this will become obvious from context. Most importantly, as with everything in the game currently, it was good enough, so I decided to move forward for now and come back to tweak it later if necessary. That said, please let me know which version of the river you prefer, having more eyes on it would be greatly appreciated. With the fire and river animations complete, our map's assets were finally done and it was time to move on to the systems portion of the episode. Now, there are a lot of easy ways to simply load different scenes in Unity, however I wanted to build out a system that would work well with the functionality I had envisioned for my portals. These portals would typically exist on the left and right side of the map to move to neighboring maps, but there would also be some maps with more than just two portals, and even some maps with hidden portals. Luckily, I stumbled across a tutorial from Sasquatch B Studios that covered a scene management system that had a lot of the functionality I was looking for. Not only would this system allow me to transition between scenes, but it would allow me to spawn the player right at the corresponding portal in the neighboring map, and provide me with an editor script to help make organizing my scenes and portals much more manageable. So we followed along. We started by creating a new interface called iInteractable that would allow us to interact with our portals but could also be used to interact with other elements of our game in the future. We then created a script named Trigger Interaction Base that would determine if our player was colliding with an interactable object, and eventually determine if the player was providing input to interact with that object. It took me a really long time to successfully connect our input handler to this script in a way that worked, so this step actually came a lot closer to the end of the setup process. We then created a Door Trigger Interaction and Scene Field script. The scene field script was the editor script that would allow us to assign scenes and portals in the editor itself in a way that connected to our door trigger interaction script. It is the first editor script I've ever made, so I was a little nervous in adding it, but it offered functionality that would be perfect for my project, so I went for it. We ran into many errors trying to get it to work, and for a long time I was only able to get spawn 2 and scene to load text to show up in the inspector and nothing else. I eventually opened up the script in the Unity forms that this tutorial was referencing and went through it line by line to see if anything was missing. After some small tweaks, I eventually had the correct fields showing up in the inspector. From there, we continued to build out the door trigger interaction script to handle interactions with our multiple different portals in each of our scenes. We created a scene swap manager script that would handle the scene swapping logic and added it to a scene swap manager game object. Then, we added a canvas UI element that would be used to facilitate a fade to black as the scene transitioned. A scene fade manager script was also created to handle the timing and speed of the fade in and fade out effect. We used our scene field editor script to assign the correct scenes and the door numbers to each of our portals. And finally, we had to go back and fix the input handler in our trigger interaction base script in order to actually test if any of this was working. We got the input working and entered our first portal. We were met with a nice fade out effect and then nothing. We made it into the new scene, but our game crashed as soon as we arrived there. In order to fix this crash, we needed to remove some of the duplicate game objects that appeared in both of our scenes and create a set of objects that persisted from scene to scene. This was done by creating a parent persist objects game object and attaching a new persistence script that we created. 
We then set the player, Cinemachine camera, fade canvas, and scene swap manager as children of the persists object parent so that they would persist between our two scenes. And amazingly, it worked. We no longer crashed when we changed scenes. Did it take like 10 seconds to load into the new scene? Yes. Did I randomly end up in the river that the player shouldn't be able to get to when I loaded in? Yes. But we did it. We moved from one map to the next. So we then added a bunch of additional code to our scene swap manager that allowed the script to direct our player to spawn in the new scene at the location of the portal that is connected to the corresponding portal that we just left through in the old scene. And just like that, certainly not with a whole bunch of bug fixing in between, we could now use our portals and arrive exactly where we expected to in the new scene. However, our game would blow up when trying to hit an enemy after having traveled through a portal, which wasn't ideal. This issue was caused by our basic enemy controller script trying to reference our player to determine which direction the enemy should be knocked back in when attacked. However, the player reference no longer existed after having moved in and out of the scene. To fix this, we adjusted how the script referenced the player and made it so that our game no longer crashed when attacking enemies after traveling between scenes. The last element that I wanted to add to the game in this episode was a new portal asset to represent our second map. See, the portal asset we had been using is the art for the field east of the cavern map, so it actually was the correct asset for the right side portal in our newest map. However, the left side portal in our first map needed to be changed to represent the art of the cavern entrance map that we just created. I created the portal frames in Procreate using a flattened image of the cavern entrance map, and then exported the PSD file and separated the frames into PNGs in Krita. Once imported into Unity, the frames were easily transformed into a new portal animation. We then added a Box Collider 2D and our Door Trigger Interaction script with the correct scene and door settings, and we had a functioning portal with our new map artwork in the animation. And this is where I decided to wrap things up for this episode. We had a fully implemented new map and the ability to actually use our portals to transition between scenes. Now, things aren't perfect. It still takes like 10 seconds to load between the two scenes, which is something that we'll need to address. We also receive a ton of console warnings about our player input control scheme when we leave our first map and re-enter it, like a lot of warnings, but hey, it's working. There are no more major crashes and these other issues can be improved in future episodes. Overall, I'm super proud of the progress that we made in this video. The game feels a whole lot bigger with the number of maps to play in essentially doubling. And more than anything, I'm excited to continue working on this project and expanding the game in different ways. As always, I hope you enjoyed this episode and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching.